I've assembled the capacitors that I'm going to be using for the SX62A in those uh, bins. The 630 volt yellow capacitors are going to replace all of the molded tubulars. The blue capacitors, of course, are the safety caps. And then uh, added to that group are the electrolytics that I'm going to be replacing. And before I uh, take them out to uh, start putting those in the SX62A, I tested them on the uh, Syncor tester. The nice thing about this Syncor tester is it'll it'll test uh, capacitors for a number of things, including leakage and value, and it does it under test conditions that are similar to what they'll be operated at inside the radio. So it's a much more reliable test. So anyway, now let's get on with uh, with the recapping and uh, testing of the SX62A. In keeping with my philosophy of trying to get a radio to work first before you start replacing components, or at least to get it to the point where the voltages will come up, what I've done is I have connected the SX62 to the variable transformer, and I have connected a meter to the B-plus output of the 5U4. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to slowly raise the voltage while monitoring the current, keeping the current below one amp, up to a little less than an amp. And as you notice, the B plus is starting to come up. It's reading about 160 volts right now. We'll come up a little further. We're reading about 270 volts. The uh, tube diagram shows 260 volts. So we're certainly getting that. And it appears that at least for now, we can power up this SX62A without overloading the transformer. And so what I'm going to do is leave it in this position for a while to allow the electrolytic capacitors to reform. Understand this is not a long-term cure. What it does is it, it helps to uh, make up for years of non-use by reforming the electrolytics. That doesn't mean that they're not still drying out and that they might not go out in a week or a month or whenever. So we're still going to replace the electrolytics so that we get some long-term life out of them. But for now, we're going to leave them in just for testing purposes. So basically, in summary, what we've done is we have powered up the SX62A by slowly increasing the AC voltage watching the total current consumed to make sure it does not exceed the current capacity of the transformer. At the same time, we monitored the B plus voltage at the output of the rectifier. By the way, I have also looked and the VR150, the voltage regulator, is also glowing. That's a good sign. That means that it starts to glow when it's, the voltage into it exceeds 150 volts and it should regulate its output at 150 volts as soon as the input exceeds 150 and the output should remain 150 even though the B plus will go on up to 260 or 270. So we're uh, at good news so far everything seems to be working obviously I don't even have a speaker hooked up or an antenna or anything so I can't really test whether the receiver itself is working but here's what we have verified Transformer is good. Rectifier 5U4 is good. Electrolytics will at least take the 260 or 270 volt uh, load. And so from here on, it's a question of replacing components. What I may do next is uh, try to hook up a speaker and see if I can get a little bit of sound out of the audio section. And then we'll move on to starting the replacement of capacitors. I've now connected up a loudspeaker 
to the rear of the SX62A. I'm using the 8 ohm output. By the way, in case I didn't mention this, one of the differences between the original SX62 and the A model is the A model allows you a, a set of output impedances. The, the original was 500 ohms and it only worked with that particular uh, Halicrafter's speaker. But in the interest of making a little more universal set, Halicrafter's added an output transformer with additional taps. So you, with an SX62A and a B, you can connect a 3.2 ohm speaker or an 8 ohm speaker or the original 500 ohm Halicrafter speaker. So we have that set up. Let's turn up the volume and see if we have any audio. Don't know if you can hear that. But there is a light hum at full volume. So, more good news, it seems like this radio may come back to life without a lot of additional changes. That doesn't mean I'm not going to complete the restoration, changing out the electrolytics and the old tubular, uh, tubular molded capacitors. It, what it means is that I'll be able to do it in stages. I'm in the process also of uh, removing this front panel. Uh, a number of pieces were missing from it, including the nuts on various controls here and the phone's jack. Uh, obviously, you have to remove the knobs. And the reason I'm doing this is I realized after I took the front panel off of this uh, unit that the, the dial glass was actually installed improperly. It was installed outside here. It actually should be inside and behind this uh, dial pointer. But to, do, to get to that, I have to take the front panel off. So I thought it might also be an appropriate time. I promised earlier to tell you about making these uh, knobs. The, uh, the original knobs, it only had two of them. This is an example. And as you notice, the lettering's a little worn and faded. There's no uh, metallic uh, center as they're supposed to be. They're supposed to match these knobs. Well, I found these online. They're made by Fillmore, and they come without any uh, numbering on the, well, uh, some of them come with the number zero through uh, nine, or zero through, yeah, nine. And uh, the others come with nothing. Obviously, you're not going to find anything with this kind of lettering, low, medium, hi-fi, bass, which you need for the other knobs. So what I did is I got some uh, decal material that you can use in an inkjet printer. These are the instructions and uh, basically any inkjet printer, and I think you can also get these for laser printers, the, uh, it explains what you need. I used uh, Corel to do the uh, graphics. And this was the result. And so, of course, I made more than one in case I need to make another set at some time. And then what I did is I cut these out. And then I did what any prudent engineer would do at this situation. I turned it over to my wife, who is an artist. And she is the one who carefully applied those decals to, the, to those switches, or those knobs. Uh, this was my test print. This is on regular paper. And I continued to do this adjusting the sizes until they fit exactly. So anyway, I told you that I would uh, mention how I did that. And the problem is that now these, because they have regular screwdriver set screws, that is, they work with a, a screwdriver like this, 
Whereas these work with a uh, hex or spline, what I may do is replace the uh, set screws in these two knobs with regular screwdriver set screws. I have some. But something I also noticed earlier, I had mentioned that you need a spline key set to take the knobs off of Helicrafters, and that is technically correct. However, what I discovered is that a two millimeter uh, hex key, that is a two millimeter, uh, in this case I'm using the T-handle version because it's more convenient, works really well in the Halicrafters knobs. A two and a half will not work, but a two millimeter fits very well and actually fits a little better than the spine wrenches that I've got. So I've been using this to insert and remove the set screws from the Halicrafters knobs. I've been doing some cleanup to the front panel here. I removed the uh, this front panel, then I installed the dial scale, uh, the dial panel. This is glass. Uh, there is another glass panel that goes on here that was missing from this particular receiver so I'm going to have to uh, get a piece of glass and cut it or have it cut. I have now reinstalled everything, the uh, uh, knobs and so on. I still need to get some nuts for these uh, controls here but basically the front panel has been put back together again and in the in the uh, uh, process of that I also worked on the dial string mechanism and got it working smoothly. The next thing that I'm going to be doing is actually replacing capacitors. There are uh, a couple of electrolytics in here and then there is a can which I will show you on top in a second that I'll be replacing. But before I actually do that what I'm going to do is take some ESR readings with this uh, ESR meter, uh, capacitance and ESR uh, readings, just to see what the original capacitors were, and then when I replace them, I'll take the readings again to see whether there was much improvement. Here you see an electrolytic that measures 31 microfarads with an ESR of 0.47 ohms. That is that electrolytic right there. It's supposed to be a 100 mic, 25 volt uh, DC. But as you can tell, the, it's lost a lot of capacity over the years. It's not uh, so bad that the set won't work, but it clearly needs to be replaced. I'm also doing this partly to show you my method for replacing. As I said, I like to replace using the uh, pigtail method. In other words, I cut the capacitor out, then I wrap a pigtail on the replacement and put it back in circuit. The jumpers, the, the clip leads that you see there, the white and the red, are to keep track of which capacitor goes where. I like to remove until I get to the bottom and then replace from the bottom up. So over here you'll see that I've written the word red alongside C127. That's the 100 microfarad 25 volt. Uh, the other one is up here it, uh, has white C24. That's the 0.22 mic. So I do that until I have gotten down to the bottom of the pile. Then I replace and move back up to the top, replacing until all of the capacitors have been replaced in this section. By the way, this section is the audio section. I'm also going to replace the uh, capacitors in the power supply, including the line capacitors with safety capacitors. So I think what I'm going to do is to save a little time. I'm just going to get, a, get on with that and just show you the final result. For those that are interested, I thought I might show you how I do this. Uh, this is what I call the pigtail method. First, I start by grabbing the end of the lead and making a small bend using a pair of pliers. Then I take a pick 
These are usually uh, called dental picks, but they're available for, from electronics suppliers. And I hold that little loop on the pick, and then I bend the lead around about two, two additional times. I pretty much botched that one, but here is a little better one that shows how you really what you're really looking for. Typical when you are on camera, you uh, you mess it up. But at any rate, that's the idea. And then you slip that onto the end of the wire. You see the the white wire there, and there's a a little wire sticking out from it. Okay, I've replaced the, uh, the tubular molded in that little section there. The uh, I've also replaced one electrolytic. You see there, I used a radial electrolytic. It would have been better if I had had an axial. So I may come back and I may reorder some of these. I just didn't have the right sizes in uh, the axial lead so I may come back and replace that one with an axial later but one thing before I do any more power up on this thing I want to replace these three capacitors right here these are the three that are across the AC line in various ways I have finished many of the capacitors in this area down here and finally, I've also installed the safety capacitors and a new line cord along with a grommet and a, and a tie, a safety tie there. So let's come back over here and look at the transformer as we bring the power up. Half an amp falls off, back up to half an amp falls off again half an amp and usually at this point when I'm uh, I have the uh, voltage up here about halfway you know there's about 70 or so volts we can go to safely go to this looks like it's more like about 80 or so volts there's a hundred hundred and ten And the current is well less than an amp. So, SX62 appears to be powering up. The only thing left is the uh, can electrolytic on the top before we can start doing some real power up. But I think I'm going to leave that to another segment because what I would like to do is replace that can or at least restuff it and then go straight into trying to get some of the circuits working in this uh, uh, SX62 to the extent they don't already. So I think that's going to be a wrap on this part of the SX62A restoration, but uh, don't worry, there will be a, another part at least and maybe several because I'll probably have to do some realignment and so on. So I hope you've enjoyed this part and look forward to seeing you in uh, part six.